All right, welcome back to my mom's basement. It is Robbie Fox, and I am here with the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. We are at the link in Philly, just backstage in a suite, feet away from where WrestleMania 40 will happen next year on April 6th and 7th. Philly, I think, is Cody Rhodes' country. I think back to Money in the Bank 2013, that Money in the Bank ladder match, I was there. Robbie that did. crowd was going insane for you. Do you feel the same way about Philly? So after that happened, 2013, Money in the Bank, I always told people Philly was my favorite spot to wrestle. And even today, I felt kind of like I didn't want to say it just because I don't want them to think I'm giving them some sales thing. Like I've had to, everybody who I've told that, I've had to explain, here's what happens. 2013, there was this loser's Money in the Bank. That's what it was internally dubbed, the loser's Money in the Bank. And the Champions one was later that night. Yeah. And that crowd got with what we were doing and 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 just lightning in a bottle i remember that's how it was described and after that wells fargo is my number one place i'm hoping the energy is the same coming to lincoln financial and being in philly because i'm not there's nothing philly about me yeah no but maybe that's why it it, it works uh yeah. they're they're a different type of fan they're a unique type of fan and for them to have got with me that night a career milestone. I wouldn't have stayed with WWE as long as I did had that moment not happened. Really? Were you already thinking about things? 2013? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? 2013, I mean, my foot originally, I was like, I feel like after 2011, 12, I was already starting to explore the idea in my mind of could I could I leave home? Could I, could I try something different? And the world was growing. Um, but yeah, 2013, I definitely was at least thinking about putting a foot out the door. So, and then that was a moment where I was, nope, nope, we're, we're clearly doing something right. But you know, what did that feel like to get embraced by such a hardcore wrestling fan? No pun intended, hardcore. But when you yeah. go back to the locker room, like you said, internally, that match is dubbed like the loser's ladder match. Yeah. Do you have like a feeling of like fucking right? We did that. I think the goal always was everybody was in that Sandow, Fandango, like everyone involved with that match was. Uh, Moxley, you know, yeah. like let's make, let's blow them out. And I believe someone who was in the later match tried to say like, oh, no. they 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 did too much stuff. They they he got they got real old timer with it, which makes me laugh because that's that's your way of knowing like you couldn't follow it. Yeah, and there was plenty of guys who could follow us, no doubt. But the match at least they couldn't follow it. So I I felt like it was definitely a moment where we were all all gung-ho to show out but i i remember leaving just being very excited because philly is again nothing philly about me and philly was not always particularly good to dusty uh they weren't bad but i do remember dusty one time painted his face like the road warriors just to make sure like i'm good right like, hey, like you guys like the road warriors yeah. i'm good <laughs> he would have never done that uh had he had a, a confidence in them being about the american dream but some reason they uh chose me that night and then i was able to choose them yeah we are here to talk about wrestlemania yeah i heard you recently talk to sam roberts about last year's main event at wrestlemania yeah you described it as bitter had an earthquake <laughs> you did i saw that yeah um you just described the main event as bittersweet because you didn't win it the feeling immediately in the locker room do you does your mind go straight to wrestlemania 40 do you go right back to how do i get back here so I'm in the ring, and they've left. Roman's up the ramp. I hear the pyro. It's the shot you've seen, but in my mind, I didn't know how close he was, and I was just sitting there with my hands, you know, draped across my knees, and I, you can see me telling myself, I verbally told myself to get up, get up. And the only thing I learned from being in a WrestleMania main event, and I know everybody was like, oh my gosh, WrestleMania main event, Hardest match to get into. Oh, your dad never did that. All that stuff. The only thing I learned was, well, I got to get back. Yeah, I got to get back, and uh, and I got to win. Like, I can't, I can't call it. I got to win, and uh, that was a, I, you know, I mentioned that to Sam, but bittersweet. I mean, more bitter than anything. The the only thing I was trying to do was look at as many fans as I could, let them know, like, it's gonna be okay. Yeah, you had a great time, right, guys? It just didn't end the way we thought, but you had a good time. And it it was a very tense, awkward, cold feeling uh, at WrestleMania 39. So it opens up opportunities for WrestleMania 40 perhaps to be a different feeling. How quickly did you go back and rewatch the 
main event from last year. Never watched it. Never? No. Do you ever watch your, your big matches? Uh, I watched, if someone asked me specifically to watch it back, I will, I'll watch it back. Or if I blew something, like if I knew something stunk, yeah, then I'll watch it back to see like, what were you thinking? What were you doing? What yeah. happened here? But if it's a, if you're feeling it, whether it's you're under or you're over, if you're feeling it in that moment, this is something I learned from Shawn Michaels, you don't really need to watch it back. You don't really need to, it was magic. Yeah. Uh, and it's the same when guys come back. How was it? How was it? You know, usually, if it was, you know, for me, I describe everything in baseball terms. That was a double. That was a triple. But when it's a home run, like, we don't need, there's no conversation we need to have. You know, like, that was a home run. That's uh, that's how I look at everything. Uh, and uh, for, for Mania, I didn't want to watch it back, not just because of how it ended, but also uh, my family was in the front row. And uh, I don't know if I can take looking at their faces. You know, they were filming them as much as they were filming me. I, I don't know if I want to see my mom uh, go through that, especially with how excited she was to be there. But, yeah, I haven't watched it back. That's crazy to me. Yeah. Do you feel like it, like, would take away from the experience if you thought a match was amazing and then you watched it back and if the broadcast didn't make it out to be? That, that might that might be why we don't watch it back. Yeah. It's like, oh, that felt amazing. And then you do exactly you watch it back and you're like, eh. Maybe not. Maybe, yeah. yeah, no, that might be another reason. Result aside, how did you feel about the match itself? Um, I feel like I'm stuck. I'm fixated on the result. Yeah. But I, I will say um, there's a moment in there where it felt like, like we were about to take over the world. There's a moment in there where it felt like, my gosh, like to me internally, how did you get here? But you're here. Like, be present, be in this moment, because you're about to take the keys to the literal kingdom, one that you walked away from, one that your family has always kind of been at odds with. If they're about to be yours. And then they they weren't. Um, but yeah, um, there was a moment in there that I I had that feeling. I would say uh, the results I'm always fixated on, but it did seem like, a very very good match. Yeah, uh, I feel like people who expect they expect the highest level from a WrestleMania. I felt like this Mania gave them. Yeah, no, I think it did as well. And it wasn't your first time in there with Roman. Obviously, you have a, a long history with the Shield, but it was your first time in there since he's become the Tribal Chief. I feel so. I feel like it was the first time ever because it was the Tribal Chief, and it was the American Nightmare. These brands that didn't exist. Yeah, when we were kiddos and vying it out for you know whatever it was the shield versus the Rhodes brothers that's why it felt like brand new to me and it's the same as if I was to wrestle like a Randy Orton today yep. it would feel brand new uh, I don't think Randy ever really wrestled uh, he did no doubt yeah. like I'm not discounting any of that but it's a just new me it took me a lot longer to get to the place I'm in than most of these guys so it's given me this whole new lease more time on my career um, where at WWE, we've had these really amazing responses in all these different cities. All these in responses with, you know, acoustically, but also merchandise. And what I, I don't take it for granted, but something I've noticed about it is it's, it's because I haven't, I've never been there. Like yeah. I might have wrestled at Wells Fargo X amount of times, but the American nightmare and that whole bit has never been there. And that's been like a lot of first time ever runs and excitement yeah speaking of first time ever first time working with brock lesnar recently yeah. i'd be remiss not to ask you what's it like to get thrown around like a baby by brock lesnar brock lesnar uh throwing you around i mean the first thing i i really take from it is i he's manhandling people yeah when you're a grown-up you don't feel like being manhandled anymore you've been in an industry where we're vying for leverage and grappling with one another you don't want to be manhandled that guy gets everybody is that strong. But the thing about him is, is that's scary. The thing about him is genuinely scary is how quick he is. And I think people in, who watched him in the UFC saw how quick he was, but seeing how quick he is at his age and at this level, just, I actually feel like he's never been better. And I was so glad that we got to have three together and that I was able to get two wins out of it at this point in his, uh, a career. I said this in the press conference, after SummerSlam, I don't want to ruin 
the lore, the allure, the mystique, and I don't think I could of Brock Lesnar, but I will say, if you've heard negative things about Brock Lesnar, I, I take them with a grain of salt because I feel like when he's gone from this, he'll be greatly missed for how unique and professional and just somebody who's going to make you earn every centimeter you get. That's a psychology that some of this doesn't have anymore. And to be able to feel that and understand that and learn from that. Yeah, absolutely. A unicorn. He is a unicorn in the business, just special. And I don't ever want to wrestle him again. I don't, uh, but, uh, it was a hell of a learning experience. Yeah. Before we started, I said I was at SummerSlam moment in that match. He picked you up and just threw you over his shoulder. No concern with how you were landing, where you my were double landing. leg. Just yeah, it was yeah. That was that was my best shot. It was a double leg. I even used my head as what they call the third arm, where you try to use yeah. your head, and it didn't even. He didn't even. He didn't even backpedal. Just picked me up, and what we would call potato sack me. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's scary when you're up there and you don't know where you're gonna land. That's for sure, yeah. but. A lot of a lot of punishment in all those matches. That somebody asked me earlier, how long does it take to recover? It used to take no time. You could get up the next day and do it again. The day after SummerSlam, I was on my bus. I slept eleven hours. Like I was in like an Odin sleep. <laughs> I was locked away in this deep black, like just locked away to recover, just because my body was ravaged. But that was a great SummerSlam. Ford Field was a great host. Detroit was a great city for it. A lot of really good stuff for charity and community uh, with the food bank and packing all these meals. Just a, a really great event. WWE coming to these shows, you've seen this for years. The way they are doing it lately, and I don't know if it's Nick Khan, I don't know, it might be Nick. You know, like There's this level of detail that's been brought to visiting cities that let's give something to the city, you know, yeah. and I, now you have people bidding on WrestleMania and Philly's going to get all of that. Yeah. Yeah. It is crazy. Um, do you have a favorite match in that trilogy with Brock? Oh, by far, uh, Puerto Rico backlash. Yeah. Um, that crowd was crazy. Crowd was crazy. Uh, I'd been there the night before, which I, I kind of was like, ah, they've seen me. I wonder if they'll be excited. Plus the end, we're the main event. We'll see. But they were amazing. Uh, it was fun to be in Puerto Rico because of the history of wrestling and sports entertainment in Puerto Rico. But the only thing I thought, when he hit the buckle and turned around and he was covered in blood, the only thing that came to my mind, and this sounds so silly, but a wrestler or a fan will understand this. The only thing that came to my mind was, this is Puerto Rico. Yeah. Because I'm thinking Abdul the Butcher. I'm thinking Carlos Cologne. Cologne. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, like, it's just, I was thinking at a different level about, like, just the hardcore. And, you know, Bad Bunny had gone out there earlier and had a, a heck of a, a showcase with Damian Priest. But that was special. I hope we get back to the island for sure. I had an unbelievable time. I did the press conference. I did SmackDown. I did the dark match after SmackDown. And then the next day to do Backlash. It was exciting. I've loved all the international shows. The Montreal show. Yeah. The Puerto Rico show. Uh, London and... For uh, Money in the Bank, Clash at the Castle. Yeah. I feel like that's been such a big part of the WWE the past couple of years as well, like expanding yeah. back out for televised events. Apparently, well, how about Cena just telling people at WrestleMania was going to be in London? That was crazy. I love, too, that that's not a thing. No, that was it, like your uncle showing up at Christmas and he's like, hey, by the way, PS5 and Xbox this year. And he left. And it's like, we didn't buy him that. I, I feel like maybe eventually it's London. They absolutely yeah. deserve a WrestleMania, but I don't think it's on the agenda. I don't, I don't think so. And I just was watching this interview like, <laughs> what is happening? Like, is is this, is he announcing it? Is he, who knows? But that was a heck of a moment because I didn't know he was there. And I came back through the curtain and then he was standing right there. I always like uh, running into John. They'll even yeah. keep that from you, huh? Like when Cena's there as a surprise, they're not even telling Cody. I I was hiding on that show. I was yeah. hiding. I was literally. I they probably somebody probably would have told me, but yeah. Uh, yeah no, I. Uh, well, even no. if they did tell you, you can't always see him. Yeah, exactly. Right. This is why he should have in the head of Bart. Pretty good. And he didn't get the gig. <laughs> this is no. it. These are the these are the quips. The wordplay. Who's your uh, compatriot there at Barstool who I don't do interviews with anymore? Brandon Walker? Yeah, tall guy, right? Yeah. Kind of bag of milk. Bag of milk. Yeah, exactly. tall Perfect. guy. Describe him, yeah. Yeah. 
I had a pretty controversial interview with him that wasn't meant to be controversial, but it's the way it's dated is like, yeah, not good. I like Brandon though. He's an okay guy. Was he up for the presidency? No, he moved to Chicago. Ah, uh, yeah, no way. Nice guy though. All right. Eh, he's all right. Brandon Walker's all right. He's all right. There it is. He's all right. What is your proudest match you've had in the WWE belt to belt since your return? Uh, since I returned? Ooh, boy. Proudest. Um, gosh. I want to say Royal Rumble, but I didn't really have a tough draw. No, you entered 30. I came in at number 30. I would say the proudest uh, moment is probably a toss-up between the Royal Rumble and Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. Okay. Mainly because of what happened afterwards um, with Brock not knowing if he's going to have five you again, taking his gloves off, not knowing what's going to happen there. You exploded his shorts. His shorts hurt, you know. Like, yeah. I uh, I was curious what was next, and that was genuinely not anticipated. So it was just a really, it it felt like, okay, I'm I'm doing something right. I'm, I'm, I'm getting the attention from people that I, I want to get their attention, and I'm, I'm kind of, I'm making as much noise and rattling the cage as the best I can, so. Yeah, those two moments in particular. I feel like uh, every place we go to is I'm proud of it and excited. Uh, I would say hell in the cell, but I'm more embarrassed by my dumb ass getting hurt. Yeah. Um, Talked about that a lot in the document. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. but yeah, the Rumble and SummerSlam were very special. If you had to do one over, wrestle another hell in a cell match with a torn peck or take that crazy table on fire spot from, you know, the top rope, for myself. Yeah. Uh, the fire was bad. I can show you some pictures. I flayed my back. Yeah. Um, I, if I had to, you're saying take one back or relive one? Relive, you have to redo one. Oh, if I'm redoing one, knowing I, what you know, I would. I can't. I, I don't <laughs> know. I don't, I don't want to redo either, but they had like, there was a purpose for, Hell in a Cell, the purpose was I didn't want people to go, oh, that's why he's never made it. Finally in the main event, here he got hurt. That's why he never made it. So I wanted them to know, no, 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 we're going to do something different with this injury. And the other one was like me defined as a person trying to get you to watch the alternative product. Yeah. It, it, was, it wasn't about being cheered. It wasn't about being booed. It was, please, when I'm on the channel, turn on the channel because every viewer counts for this company. And I don't want to blow it. And I want to. I wanted to be a leader and and help lead the team there. Was it a great decision? No. Uh, did a lot of people try to help to make it better? Yes. Uh, and in the end, I'm not. Heat's on me, but I put a little heat on Brandy too. She loaded that table up. <laughs> loaded it. Loaded it. Which I think somebody said to her earlier, like, hey. The more, the merrier. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's the advice. Lighter but... fluid, right? Yeah. 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 Andrade, not a mark on him, though. I know. He went face first, not a mark on him. Not a mark on him. Craziness. I'll send you some pics. Gnarly. Yeah, I don't know if I want to see it. Yeah. Um, gross. I went to a dinner with a buddy the next night, and my shirt is sticking to my skin, like where the flay is. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. I love hearing you talk about your relationship with Arn Anderson and how brilliant you think Arn is Double. in this business. Um, you've said that. If wrestling has Scorsese's and Tarantino's, he could be one of those names. What is one piece of wisdom that you could share with us that Arn has showed you that you, you know, put into your wrestling life day to day? It's going to sound crude, but I mean, it was always something he'd hit me with was be selfish. I, uh, I've never really understood what be selfish means. I, I get it. And I, and I can point at somebody and go, ah, I know what they're doing here. But Arn knew where I was at, and I think to a degree knew where I was going, even without it all happening, and knew that I might have been giving too much of myself away. I might have been too much of my equity away. I might have been giving individuals who weren't ready for the moment the moment, and that was always great advice that he had about being selfish, and uh, it, it kind of would reel me in for the matches, but, but what I loved most about that period was I we have all these old timers and these legends and these luminaries. We have some that think about it and they just think that's the only way you can do it, how we did it. To watch one 
who was a genius who made millions of dollars and helped others like Brock Lesnar, John Cena, Batista make millions of dollars to watch one look at the crazy stuff that we were doing and go, okay, it, there's something here. It, he'd always say the high tech stuff. He'd say they can do both, you know, old school and the high tech stuff. That's what he'd always say. And, uh, that was great. Terry Funk had that skill too. Terry Funk here in Philly knew uh, it's going a different way. Just like college football, you know, the running quarterback, it's going a different way. And uh, Arn's somebody who's been able to see it. So nothing but love for 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 Dubs. Um, I know he's just living his life, doing his thing, but love Dubs. I love that high tech. I hope that catches high tech. On. I want that to be it. It's the new style of wrestling, high tech. High tech, yeah. That's really good. He always likes him. He's like, he can do both, you know? And he got a good promo in the high tech. Yeah, old school fundamental. High tech. <laughs> no, I love it. Yeah. I'm going to put you on the spot here, bring it back to WrestleMania. What is the greatest WrestleMania main event of all time? It's not. Um, so my answer is, it's not the main event. But and I think I know what your answer is. But do you need it to be a main event? Many it goes on last. That's why I worded it like that, because I think I know Fody, and I think he's going to answer The Rock versus Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania 18. Am I right about that? Well, so Rock versus Hogan, to me, it, to me is the greatest match of all time at WrestleMania 18, because what we do involves the fans. It's They're not just observers. They are involved, and their involvement that night was unique and special, and it was the good stuff, more than any match I'd seen in modern history, their, their involvement. But the greatest main event for a WrestleMania uh, might might be the one that had the most fruit bore from it, and that might be Stone Cold versus Shawn Michaels. Um, I don't know if Bell the Bell it was, but I know uh, Mike Tyson coming in with that super fast count. So fast, yeah. And the stunner and the, the moment, the duck, the kick, back, the whole moment. It set WWE up for a completely different run. Uh, now it's a given, right? WWE is the most profitable. It's the hottest it's ever been in terms of record gross, record gross. The no comps list of TV is mind blowing. It's every show. It's really just, we're living in the golden era. We're living in this good time. That period they were coming out of a little bit of hardship and Austin brought them to the, the promised land. You know, like I, I remember when he told me he was proud of me, I thought like my mind was the most profitable wrestler ever said he was proud of me that feels good uh so maybe that one i also want to say one that's not maybe savage hogan as well oh really only because it set savage up it yeah. said and it was a year-long story and uh, you know um i feel like i'm forgetting a major one at some point in here because it's been hold on andre is a big one in terms of what you're talking about in terms yeah. of setting the wwe hogan, up, right hogan andre is unbelievable and it, and it's to me there's some people who are like i love steamboat savage like yeah i did too but i definitely was there for like hogan, hogan andre hogan slamming andre. him in the moment and bobby heenan getting trash thrown at him it's a yeah. beautiful situation um gosh what was there's one though that's that's oh i'd say modern history as well Daniel Bryan getting into the WrestleMania 30 main event. I remember my mom. My mom's so critical. So everything is, oh, such and such looked bad out there. Such and such tan wasn't good. Such and such gear sucks. But this is weird. <laughs> but I remember her saying, like, she goes, that that Bryan, that made the whole WrestleMania. And then, and she wasn't wrong. That story yeah. coming out of the match with Hunter all the way to the take the ride of, no, he's not going to do it. Close. So WrestleMania 30 really special, too. I get that. That's my favorite. Yeah, Dan, Dan, Brian, like pretty special individual, special, unbelievable talent. Uh, yeah, no. So that's a, that's another really good one. And the last time we did an interview, you were telling me about how surprised you are at how some of your students haven't even seen like The Rock wrestle. They know The, the Rock is an actor. But yeah, they haven't actor. seen you know his yeah. matches against Triple H, the latter match, something like that. What are three matches that you think all prospective students? should watch before going into wrestling training that you just think would be good for you to have in your brain before wrestling yeah oh, before um, you even enlist in the nightmare factory i i will say rock hogan should be on that list i'll say sting flair from the great american bash um and the reason i say that one it's not so much that is about a full company getting behind somebody and and setting it up. Well, you got JYD and Paul Orndorff, absolute legends at ringside in their gear. 
uh, your Eligante is handcuffed to Ole Anderson, and there's the horseman can't get involved. I mean, the ride they take you on. So there's the there's two, and then the third one. True. That's tough. Maybe I leave the third slot open. Just mysterious. Maybe we slot. say the third slot's you know a future WrestleMania main event. Maybe the main event of WrestleMania forty. Maybe WrestleMania forty, the main event. Maybe. And if not, I do need to give you an answer. Though. That's that's a John Cena thing when you say. What oh, my next match. match yeah. Next one. Yeah. Uh, I do need to give you an answer though, uh, as far as a match that they should watch. There's a. Uh, I've noticed you got to be contemporary you, these kids come in and they may not want to watch um hogan andre they they may not it may be too slow for them and, they, and maybe they will watch it yeah but it's you can tell it's not it's not checking the box for them um so maybe i'd move it forward to Shawn michaels versus razor ramon in the latter match yeah, yeah. yeah just just to see uh the psychological element of working with the ladder as something to climb but also as a weapon i could the third slot we really should leave open because it could change i think it's there's a lot of quality tag matches in there too we'll say that match could change any day today it's the ladder so at the fat at the nightmare factory the two matches we do watch for tape study are the brain busters versus uh the rockers and we watch rick flair versus staying at great american bash so those are the two that we always watch together every now and then we'll watch brett versus perfect why that tag match in particular because Arn and Tully are working overtime. They're, they never stop moving. There's no such thing as a rest hold. They're not resting on the apron. They're working overtime to continuously make the Rockers look cooler and cooler and cooler. And Tully, I can sing Arn phrases all day, but Tully, his mindset of, I want them the loudest, the longest. I don't care if Hulk Hogan's on the show. That's a winner's mindset. Yeah. I like that. and I, and I And that's special. And that match is really... Unique too, because you'd be shocked. A lot, a lot of kids today will tell me about Shawn Michaels. Their answers are are jarring, and for some of our other coaches, you'd be like, "What? You don't know such and such?" But I don't want to be that way, yeah. so I just okay. You know, well, we'll we'll watch some of that, and then, you know, see what we can do. Man. I want it to be a very friendly place. My yeah. big thing with the Nightmare Factory is. I teach beginners. I teach fundamentals. It's never an A plus. It's a B or a C. Move on. Let's learn the next thing. I want them to have a good experience revolved around the squared circle and wrestling. I don't want them to be. Uh, I don't like the word bullied, but I don't want them to be bullied. I don't want them to do an insane, insane amount of calisthenics. I don't. I want them to know, like, hey, it's very hard to do this. It's very difficult. But if your experience is just this twelve weeks at the Nightmare Factory, I want you to have a good time. Yeah, yeah. I want you to have a fun time. Bring your family to the showcase, and if you decide this ain't for me. Totally fine. Yeah. Um, you know, the ones who I do get a sense they're going to make it, we're way harder on them. Where is that? That's the kid we pick on. All yeah. Time. It's the one who I think is going to make it. Yeah. Because you're pushing that. Yeah. Whiplash type thing. hundred percent. Maybe yeah. not that hard. And, and you're going to be pushed. You know, I was just very pushed when it came to wrestling against Brock Lesnar. You're going to be pushed. So you got to toughen up. I absolutely have to toughen up. All right. My final question. We're both big Star Wars fans. Yes. If WrestleMania 38 was your new hope, and WrestleMania 39 was your Empire Strikes Back. Can WrestleMania 40 be your Return of the Jedi? Yes. You got to wear something green for it. We're yeah. at Philly, Eagles, green lightsaber, Return of the Jedi. It's funny you mention that, and this is for fellow Star Wars fans, but the line that chokes me up, and I don't even want to say it, it chokes me up this day, can't say it. I can't say it. It's the I'm a Jedi. Yeah. But I'm not even going to finish the rest of the line. You look it up. Watch Return of the Jedi because people don't value Return of the Jedi that much and they should. It's the culmination of all of them. When I meet somebody who's like, Return of the Jedi is my favorite, I'm like, good on you. Yeah. Good on you. Thanks for not telling me Rogue One. <laughs> yeah. Good on you. Or everyone you dies. Rogue One? Huh? You anti Rogue One? No, but it's the bottom of my list. Everybody dies and I already know what's going on. And all that stuff with Darth Vader was so cool. It was. Yeah, it's amazing. It's the stuff they added in the last 15 minutes because yeah. the rest of the movie was, you know. Don't say boring. It's not. I love all Star Wars movies and I love Rogue One. It's at the bottom of my That's list. That's how I feel about Star Wars. Like Solo's at the bottom of my list. I still love it. Solo's at the bottom of your list? It is. I'm not super what fascinated in seeing someone other than Harrison Ford playing solo. Understood, understood. But the idea, if you're a Rebels and a Clone Wars fan, and now you got Ahsoka, and the, it's all happening in real time. It's happening. Uh, shout out to Rosario Dawson, member of the Nightmare Family, yeah. by the way. Shout out. Uh, 
Anyways, the moment at the end of Solo makes it all worth it. The it's, mall moment? I'm not giving it away, but there's I mean, a particular moment at that's the end. Like, that's like the Darth Vader moment. They added it at the final 15 that's minutes. That's fair. That's fair, which is why Rogue One isn't bad. <laughs> and uh, uh, Empire Strikes Back is my favorite. Same. Hands down, my favorite. But also, my second favorite is Last Jedi. And that causes people to, I mean, lose it. Like, I insult your... I love that you said that. They insult your... Like, they come deep yeah. for you. Like, well, it's, it's objectively a bad movie. Even claim you're lying. They're like, stop, stop acting like you like this. Yeah, like, it's been like, six years. I'm not lying. Yeah, and the one that followed it, guys, we're, it's a, it's good. Yoda's joking. They blow the tree up. They took chances. The they took Jedi. They took chances. And the original Star Wars was all about taking chances yeah. at first. But take chances, kids. Like take George chances. did. Yeah. All right. WrestleMania 40. Yes, it's on sale now. Philly, April 6th, April 7th. Pack a hoodie. It might be cold. So. I'll be here. Return of the Jedi. Cody will be here, hopefully in the main event, the return of the American Nightmare.